Hello and welcome to the FNS 50217 Diploma of Accounting, specialising in payroll administration student information session. With me today, I have Chief Academic Officer Iona McKimmy, and what an exciting course, particularly for those in the accounting and bookkeeping space, uh, this is. It certainly is, James. Every day when we work in accounting roles, especially in small and medium sized businesses, we have to do payroll. And there's a lot involved in managing and administering a payroll. So what we've done is we've developed a new course, um, which um, really does focus, focus on payroll administration. Excellent. Now, throughout today's um, student information session, what we'll do is have a bit of a look at an, uh, an overview of the course, some of the key areas, skills and competencies that, it's de that it delivers. Um, we'll do a deep dive into the units themselves. We'll have a look at the course materials, um, really, I suppose, how the course is brought to life, the assessment functions, which we always know is of great interest to those uh, potentially taking on a course. Um, look, at, look at the online learning experience and, of course, um, us here at Mentor Education and really what it means to be a student um, with us here. So with that in mind, first thing, let's do a bit of a look at the course um, overview and um, talk about the duration of course and then, of course, what the competencies that it delivers as well. So the um, FNS 50217 Diploma of Accounting, focusing on payroll administration, is delivered over 12 months. Now students um, experience the course um, online with, um, with virtual classrooms and the course is really actually quite a really great course. It, it's very broad in its approach and we look at a number of different things like financial and business performance information and how we create that information. Um, preparing operational budgets. Um, we also look at taxation documentation for individuals. Um, provision of management accounting information and of course, processing and applications that are relevant to payroll superannuation and tax um, that directly relate to payroll functions. So really, when we consider um, in, an, in a number of organisations that we work in in internal accounting roles, often we, there's, we, we have a touch point in every one of these core areas of accounting. So, um, so by um, touching on each one of these areas, we, we like to believe that this is a really good broad-based course for people that are involved in those type of roles or wanting to work in those type of roles. And I think what's what's really interesting and good about this particular course is there is that element of accounting fundamentals where we look at financial reporting and things like that. And then, of course, there is that element of specialisation by way of payroll. And really, it's not until you sort of deep dive into this idea of um, accounting and how it's strictly related to payroll that you sort of realise to begin how complex it can be and how many moving parts there are and, and, and why I think getting an understanding, developing skills and competencies, you know, specifically relevant to, to this element of accounting can be really important. And this really comes to life, I think, um, in the units themselves, which we can see up here in front of us, broken in sort of into the core units and the elective units. So take us through what we've got up in front of us now, Iona. So the core units, that, and as we see them on screen, um, are really those core accounting functions that we do uh, on a day-to-day on a -day and a week-to-week -week 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 and year-to-year -year and month-to-month -month basis. So every in, in accounting and bookkeeping roles, we often create reports such as profit and loss, um, cash flow budgets, unit, um, business unit budgets, um, balance sheets, um, a whole range of, um, of reports which are both for making financial decisions as well as for um, our statutory reporting. So we look at those functions and, and how we do that. Um, we also look at tax documentation for individuals because we understand that some um, some people who, who um, are in the course may want to work in, um, in, in accounting practices. So that's important. And managing budgets and forecasts. So cash flow budgets, operational budgets, production budgets, any type of just so many different types of budgets and forecasting. Because forecasting is that what if capability of, you know, what if we make this change, how will it affect the business? So we looked at. We also look at man, managing budgets and forecasts. Preparing financial reports for corporate entities goes hand in hand with providing financial and business information. 
and internal control procedures. We always have um, authorization processes, for example, that um, we might have for purchasing. And, and how do we actually manage purchase, the, the purchasing process or stock purchase or um, the um, raising of payments uh, for uh, creditors and so on and so forth. And also providing management accounting information. So these are the core units, but we also know that um, at this level in an organisation, often we're responsible for overseeing a payroll. And payroll is an area that is um, complex in itself. And we, we have to look at a number of different functions when we're managing a payroll. So we have to look at salary packaging arrangements, but we also need to know how to manage additional allowances and how to account for those now payroll how to process superannuation payments, uh, salary sacrifice, for example, and um, complex employee terminations we may have to take up, um, for example, long service leave, we might have to take up termination payments. We might have had an employee that's been with us for more than, um, for, for more than 10 years. So there are a specific rules around how we would um, undertake a redundancy with that employee, for ex just an example, as one of the, the, the topics in the unit. We also look at industrial regulations relevant to payroll, so the Fair Work Act, the ATO, um, or the Australian Taxation Act, and a number of other acts that also can um, affect our, our, our payroll and our payroll management and applying taxation systems that are relevant to payroll. So our um, working world is changing very, very much and with um, payroll in particular, because we have regular updates um, with tax rates, for example, we have regular updates where um, we have changes with superannuation, with um, fringe benefit tax, a whole range of things. Um, being um, be, being aware of those things um, and um, and each one of them of course is treated differently so um, we really drill down into that unit of, about those actual taxation requirements that are relevant to payroll of course as part of this we look at um, excuse me payment summaries for employees and single touch payroll um, the exciting part of this course is that we use a payroll it is called quick pay um, or oh, sorry, I apologise, KeyPay, um, and KeyPay is part of, um, um, and as part of that process, we actually go through setting up a payroll, um, identifying allowances, creating different types of employees, so contractors as well as employees, and how we manage that, and superannuation, um, and what the rules are. So we actually take a deep dive and all the way through the course, we're actually, for, through the payroll units, we're actually actively using a payroll. So um, not only are we learning about, or not only are we, are we learning about um, those core functions that we do in a, in a middle, um, middle, middle management or mid-level accounting role, but we're also taking a real deep dive into payroll and payroll management. I think that's really good. You know, the, the I mean, certainly there is that theoretical aspect, and you do need to be across a lot of that industrial relations stuff. You know, what laws, you know, what policies and processes are going to shape what we can and can't do. But then putting it into practice by actually, you know, running through a live payroll system, I think is really, really important as well. And then that's kind of where you get to sort of see the implications of what these particular policies and laws have when it comes to individuals and, of course, their um, respective payroll rights and/or obligations. Mm. Now, the course itself, um, there are some injury requirements for the Diploma of Accounting, isn't there? There certainly is. So students need to have, um, or, or um, applicants for the course, need to have completed a Certificate 4 in Accounting or a Certificate 4 in Bookkeeping. We can see the course codes up here. Or the um, FNS SS 0014 Accounting Principal Skill Set or Equivalent Individuals Units. Students also really, really should be over 18 years of age at the time when they begin the course, have a strong grasp of computer and computer and technical skills. Part of what we will be doing in this course is utilising spreadsheets, for example. Um, we'll also be accessing a payroll. And of course, um, we need to be able to 
um, log in to use the learning management system as well. Um, we do recommend that students complete their um, assessment tasks with Microsoft Office or, um, for example, um, Libra um, as, as an equivalent, um, <coughs> have it installed on their computer. Also, they need access to a reliable internet connection. There are regular tutorials and study support sessions that are made available to students as part of this course if they elect that option. And it is an accounting course, so adequate literacy and numeracy skills to complete the calculations required in the course. So <laughs> we can't escape the maths, can we? No, no, no. <laughs> it is an accounting course. Excellent. Now, look, I will just say as well, um, for those who are perhaps considering um, this particular um, diploma, there is a pathway um, course package available whereby you could actually do the accounting principles skill set, okay, and then jump straight into the diploma after that. So we certainly make that option available for you. And if you've got any questions, again, about those entry requirements or even perhaps previous work experience that you've done, things like that, speak to our education advice team and they can always point you in the right direction. So can I also point out that um, there, there is a more recent course, which is a certificate for in accounting and bookkeeping, which is the FNS 40217. Um, and students may have also completed that and be eligible for entry as well. Excellent. Now, what's going on out there in the industry? We know there's a demand for accountants um, and certainly those with, with, with um, these, these kind of skill sets at the moment. Um, in March um, this year, 2022, um, as per the data from SEED, we can see that there's job growth of 8.6%, which really is exceptionally high when you look at sort of job growth and, and sort of, you know, ratios and how they're changing in different sectors and, of course, um, across different occupations. But going back to that idea of sector, it, it, look, irrespective as to what sector it is, there's going to be a need for those accounting and essentially those payroll functions. And that's why... Um, something like this is so valuable and we know that employees in all sorts of industries and sectors are looking for individuals with these particular skill sets. Furthermore, with the dynamic space, with the consistent change in regulation and things like that, ensuring that the organisation does in fact remain compliant when it comes to payroll uh, is exceptionally important as well. And again, another key driver as to why individuals who can display, demonstrate and actually show skill sets in both the accounting, but certainly the payroll area um, are really in high demand at the moment. Again, just an example of some of the um, uh, relevant occupations from a financial accountant, payroll officer, of course, management accountant, investment analyst, cost accountant, whatever it may be. So again, um, the application of competencies and skills that come by way of the Diploma of Accounting and then, of course, the Diploma of Accounting with the payroll specialisation um, is really quite broad and we know for a fact that they are in uh, demand in industry at the moment. Now, it's not all maths, though. Let's talk a little bit about the learning materials and how the course is actually brought to life. So the course itself um, has a, um, a, a very, very large range of different types of um, learning um, opportunities for students. So we have some some units, we have full textbooks. In all units, we have learner guides, which are a shorter form of textbook in a reader. Um, we also have um, students who are also encouraged to undertake self-directed learning activities. And in a number of units, practice activities um, that, that uh, help to um, practice assessment tasks before we attempt them. Um, as I mentioned before, there is also access to uh, KeyPay, which is the payroll system, and students are able to go in and out of the payroll system and practice using it um, at every opportunity through, throughout the payroll units. Um, there's also a number, there's, there's also video uh, that's available in, um, in some units, but we also have the um, uh, online live tutorials for both um, subject topics as well as study support and assessment support. Students are also encouraged in those sessions to treat them as forums, share experiences, um, and really begin to build their professional network. What else do we have? We also have study guides. We have um, PowerPoint presentations that students are able to actually download and retain. Um, and of course, the all important um, assessment as well. Excellent. Now, speaking of assessments, um, which we know is always of great interest to prospective students, 
Um, I suppose this is a bit of a preamble. In many respects, we consider assessments to be an extension of the learning experience itself, and they're not necessarily all that scary. Tell us why, Ona. Okay, so here at Mentor Education, all students are encouraged to undertake self-directed learning activities. Um, and, and, and I can't encourage students in this course enough to take up the tutorial option as well. Um, as, as part of um, those self-directed learning activities, students are exposed to the types of tasks or the type of um, assessment um, items that they will complete as part of their assessment. So assessments commonly include two or three of the things that we can hit, see here on screen. Um, this course, of, um, this course um, in the assessments relies a lot on case studies and scenarios where students, especially in the payroll units, will be responding to a case study. Um, and then they'll be completing that activity in the payroll. So as I mentioned before, assessments commonly contain, well, are comprised of, I'm sorry, two or three of these assessment tasks. So they might complete some short answer questions um, or knowledge questions. Um, there's also projects in, in some units where you might where students might create an accounting policy, for example, or a, um, a, a finance um, a, a finance administration um, policy. So it, they may also complete some long answer questions, create presentations to inform others um, about something relating to accounting. Um, there are some multiple choice questions which are review questions which are part of the self-directed learning activities. Um, in addition to those and some knowledge questions, as I mentioned before, there is the practice activities in the payroll modules um, and there is also, for example, management challenge questions. So if you're managing a team and, you know, how would you respond to this? Um, so. As I said before, there are a number of very different types of assessment um, activities that all really relate to the unit itself that, um, that we've been studying. So they're a continuation of your learning. Excellent. So for those who are watching, um, just to clarify, if you cast your mind back to that slide where we actually went through each of those individual units, what you might expect would be perhaps two or three of the type of assessments that we can see up here in front of us attached to one of those um, unit so um, certainly not all of these for every single unit just to clarify there um, and of course it really is an extension and an opportunity to demonstrate what it is that you've picked up um, throughout that particular unit which I think is great. So the online learning experience how does it work what do you need to get involved um, in simple terms uh, strong and reliable internet connection as we made reference to earlier on you're going to have want to have access to a laptop or desktop computer and then, of course, on that laptop or desktop computer, a browser, um, so Chrome, Firefox, your Mac equivalent, whatever it may be. And then through that browser, you'll be, be able to access the online learning management system through our student portal. Now, the great thing about that is you can access it essentially 24 hours a day. So we know in many respects that um, studying these days is very different to what it was 10, 20, 30 years ago. Um, a lot of our students we find are uh, working full time, looking after families full time, doing all of the above and still managing to squeeze their study in whenever and however they can. So one of the great things, of course, about the online learning management system is that flexibility that gives you um, and, of course, ability to essentially log on and complete um, your study from just about anywhere. Now, the other thing is, whilst we do recommend, of course, a laptop or desktop computer to complete your assessment, um, the other advantage, of course, of the learning management system being available through your browser is if in some cases you'd like to access some readings or learning materials or whatever it may be through a smart device. So um, your mobile phone, a tablet, whatever it may be, you can certainly do that as well, because we know students will um, do readings on the train. Um, they'll do it in bed whenever and however they can. So, um, again, really, really nice to have that flexibility that's available to through the online learning. The other thing that we may mention of, um, which I'd just like to briefly jump into, is the virtual classroom-based tutorials. So this is an opportunity for you to log in in real time and interact with your educator, uh, which is great um, because, A, you get an opportunity to go through the course material in some depth, um, have a bit of an opportunity to discuss some of the concepts in there and really kind of, I think, get your teeth stuck into it and develop a really nice and deep understanding. So that's one benefit. 
The other one, of course, is that ability to interact with other students in your cohort. And we know, in, in you know, certainly when it comes to learning, that can be a really, really important part of the learning experience as well. So that's not just to, I think, share an experience with like-minded people who are perhaps, you know, studying the same thing as you. Um, that's certainly one benefit. But the other one is being able to develop and establish professional relationships. Um, and then, of course, take those on into your future careers. Um, it may very well be that, you know, perhaps in two or three years time after you've completed the qualification, you come up against a challenge. You're not quite sure how to respond to a situation and you may have established a relationship with somebody in class. Um, you know, that's carried on. You're happy to pick up the phone, give them a call and say, look, I've come up against this at work. Um, what would you recommend me do? You know, and again, that can be another really, really valuable resource to take with you. And then finally, um, another one which I think is really, really important, particularly with online learning and remote learning, um, which we're doing a lot of these days, is that sense of connectivity and um, that relationship that you establish with your education institution. And out of that comes um, a degree of accountability as well. So particularly when we're doing a lot of self-directed online learning, it can be easy for us to sort of put it off a day, put it off a week, whatever it may be. I will, you know, there's always time for that to come back. But if we know that we've got regular tutorials and um, which are getting live um, that we can log into, it also it provides that sense of connection with our education institution and also our other cohorts. Um, and also that sort of sense of accountability, which I think is nice to assist us when it comes to kind of working through um, an online course such as this in a prescribed period of time. So obviously a whole lot of benefits, but in simple terms, um, access to laptop or desktop computer and a strong and reliable internet connection and a willingness to, to get on board, um, excite your potential and learn really. Now, there's a whole range of support as well, okay? So not just the virtual classroom based tutorials and it really begins from day one. So um, we've got a great team of education advisors based here in Melbourne, and it's their job to um, speak with you, spend the time to work out what it is that you're currently doing, where it is that you'd like to go, what are your career goals, those kind of things, and then identify what's going to be the best course or education solution for you. And in this case, it may very well be um, the Diploma of Accounting with the Payroll Administration Specialisation. Working really, really closely with them, they'll facilitate, of course, the enrolment process and everything that goes with it. And then after that, um, once you're uh, enrolled as a student at Mentor Education, you've got access to another whole range of support. Um, again, from our student support team, um, who are there to help you with just about anything and everything. And that can be um, orientating you to the learning management system, you know, assisting you um, getting sessions um, booked in so that, you know, you, they can onboard you if you have any troubles there. Um, arranging uh, things such as extensions on your course if you need it, or even booking appointments with the education team. Which brings me on to that third tier of support, which is the team of educators. And I know I'll hand on over you to talk to us about them. Thanks, James. We do understand that if we're returning to study or we're beginning a new course, sometimes it can feel overwhelming. So um, our education and training team here at Mentor is comprised of educators, trainers, um, assessors and tutors. So you're actually able to either call in or uh, to email support and request a one-to-one -one appointment with um, any one of those people um, that is um, as, part, as, as part of your course to actually speak to one-on-one. -on -one. So you have individual time that's made available to you. Um, the, our, our, our wonderful team will um, work with you and support you throughout your course and, and if you're needing additional, um, additional assistance such as um, additional tutorials or uh, additional um, tutoring because um, you're facing, you're, you're really feeling some challenges with um, a particular unit of study um, that they'll work with you to put some extra sessions in place to support you through your course. Um, we're always here and we try and encourage our students to um, let us know as soon as possible. Um, don't wait to ask and, um, and get that process in place. It's a simple matter of um, a a a either emailing uh, through to our support team and asking for that to um, happen or um, phoning in and, um, and our wonderful student support team will um, get that process kicked off for you. 
So we're always here. We're here via email. We're here via phone. But we're also here for those additional one-on-one -on -one sessions as well if anybody needs them at any time. Absolutely. And just to cap that off, I will say one thing that we do recognise, of course, is that life happens. Um, it may be, you know, there's a family emergency, you have to go overseas, whatever it may be, keep us in the loop. And of course, we can always um, make arrangements so that it doesn't necessarily impact your study. But again, communicate with us, link you with the student support team. They're really there um, to help you and facilitate you along the way. Now, a number of questions that we often get asked. Um, so I'll jump the gun a bit here. Um, the first one, of course, is can I get government funding? And the short answer to that is no. So all of our courses are self-funded by students themselves, um, or in some cases, their employers. Now, that said, if the um, enrolment fee perhaps is too much, um, we do have payment plans and options available. So speak to the education device team. They can sort all of that out for you. You can start at just about any time. Um, so what we'd like to say is if you can get your enrolment into us, you will be up and running, usually within around about 24 hours. Um, everything's included in the course, okay? So there's no additional fees for textbooks or anything like that. Anything and everything that you need to achieve your qualification and the outcomes from this particular course um, is included in the um, uh, enrolment fees. Given the study options, now of course we've got um, self-directed and we do have uh, uh, the opportunity to access the virtual classroom-based tutorials. We recommend though 99% of the time that you take advantage of those virtual classroom-based tutorials. Number of benefits that I went through earlier on, uh, absolutely um, get on board with them. The course is nationally recognised in all states and territories around Australia. There are prerequisites, which we talked about earlier on, but if you've got any questions about that, um, which is um, very fair and reasonable, uh, jump on the phone, send us an email, get in contact with the education device team and they can of course answer those for you. And how long do people usually take to finish? Well, the prescribed time is around about 12 months, okay? Now it might be that you can dedicate a little bit more time each and every day, week and month and you finish a little bit sooner, or it might be that you know something happens and you can't work through the course quite as quickly and it may take a little bit longer. So best thing to do, 12 months is the time frame that you wanna to work towards with respect to completing the course. A bit of background on us, um, Mentor has been delivering online education in the financial services, business, accounting and project management space since 2003. Um, we've had amazing student outcomes in that time. Uh, it's fair to say that um, we are, I think, really, really committed to um, online education and in ensuring that the outcomes that the students get by way of you know, delivering great um, learning materials, good assessments, and of course, fantastic support, um, you know, are, are some of the things that we really focus on. And this is sort of reflected in the student outcomes um, that we get each and every year. I'm going to talk to us about some of the numbers we've got up in front of us. So what we can see here um, is the results of the um, National Centre for Vocational Education and Research VET Student Outcomes Survey. Um, these are the 2020 results. Um, the um, the the, the what, what, one of the things that these um, that what we're looking at here on screen really does is it highlights our commitment to our students and our students' aspirations, all of those reasons why they're studying. So 92% um, of our students um, in in this survey um, was satisfied with their uh, with their assessment. 86 and a half would recommend mentor as a training provider. 91.6% of our students were satisfied with the overall quality of their training. And most importantly, 92% of our graduates were employed or went on to enrol in further study after training. So what we're seeing here really exemplifies our commitment to our students, our students' aspirations, and the level of support that we actually um, provide to our students uh, to, re to, to reach the goals that they're wanting to, to, to reach. Excellent. Now, finally, if you'd like more information um, about um, the FNS 50217 Diploma of Accounting, um, which specialises in payroll administration, um, there's a number of ways that you can do that. So um, head online and head on over to the Diploma of Accounting um, course page, and there you'll be able to download a course guide, which has got everything which we talked about today, plus more. Um, or email us direct um, and link in with the education advice team. So course consultant at mentor.edu.au, shoot them a question, request a course guide, whatever it may be, they'll get right back to you. Or give us a call on 1300 306 146 between nine and five, Monday to Friday, Melbourne and Sydney time. And again, speak to you if you're one of the uh, team members. 
And if none of those options work, uh, head on over to the website. We've also got a live instant messaging chat function, which you can take advantage of as well. So actually chat live in real time with our team based here in Melbourne, who again can ask, uh, answer any questions you may have. I want to thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, James, and thank you for everyone attending. I look forward to seeing you as students here at Mentor Education. <laughs> Absolutely. Look, you stole my line. So, and again, thanks everybody for tuning in. Uh, as always, take an opportunity to excite potential, and we do look forward to seeing you as students very soon. See you, everybody. Bye, everyone.